Hi, I want to do an example talking about how we can measure the coefficient of static friction for an object. And all you need is a ramp with the object and the surface that you want to measure the coefficient of static friction between. And what you do is you adjust the angle of that ramp until you find the angle where it will remain at rest, but beyond which it cannot be made to be at rest. And that maximum angle will allow us to calculate the coefficient of static friction. Now, if we take a look at this object that's sitting on this ramp, there are going to be three forces acting on it as long as it stays in equilibrium. There's, of course, the weight pulling straight down towards the center of Earth. There's the normal force and because the surface is at this angle, the normal force is going to be acting up and to the right, and the static friction. And the static friction here would, by definition, be the maximum static friction. Any steeper, we'd need more static friction, and it wouldn't work. And that static friction is being directed parallel to that surface, so it would be up and to the left. Now, we could try and work everything out and just keep our original coordinates as we sort of expect in physics with weight being in the y direction or really negative y direction and x being the direction perpendicular to our weight direction. Well, whenever we're dealing with ramps, it is almost always beneficial to rotate our coordinate system and work in a rotated coordinate system x prime and y prime. And remember, in physics, we never use prime to denote take the derivative of. That's a math thing. x prime here just means our new x direction. y prime means our new y direction. So x prime is the direction down the ramp and y prime is the direction normal to the ramp. So that means that our normal force is in our y prime direction, our static friction is in our negative x prime direction, and our force of gravity is going to be down and to the right. But to make this picture flat, we have to rotate everything by the angle of our ramp. So here I said it was 30 degrees. So that means that the angle of our weight gets rotated forward from the normal by that same angle theta, which is equal to 30 degrees. So, how can we find the coefficient of static friction? Well, if we're in equilibrium, all three of these vectors should sum to zero. So the easiest thing I can think of to do is add my normal force plus my force of static friction plus my force of gravity because in adding those three graphically head to tail to be in equilibrium, I should have a closed geometric shape, a triangle. And the force of static friction and the normal force have to be perpendicular to each other. So not only is it a triangle, it's a right triangle. And the angle that I know my weight got rotated forward theta from my new y direction, so by alternate interior angles, this angle theta, this angle theta have to be exactly the same, so I know my opposite side, the force of static friction, and my adjacent side is the normal force, so the tangent of theta has to be the force of static friction divided by the normal force. But when we're at our maximum force of static friction, our force of static friction would be the coefficient of static friction times the normal force divided by the normal force, the normal force cancels out. So that means then that the coefficient of static friction is the tangent of the maximum angle that an object will set on a ramp before slipping. So if that happens to be 30 degrees, then the coefficient of static friction between those two objects is 0.58. Thanks for watching.